I, I think we should. Oh, here he comes! Hey, Minister! 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 How are you? Minister! Answer! Well, how's your wife? Answer the question, Minister! Counterclockwise, thanks to scoop.co.nz. Are you there, Lyndon? I am. Hello, John. Lovely. Hello there to you, and welcome to the show. Uh, you're, you're in for um, Selwyn uh, every alternative week now, so uh, I'm looking forward to our, our new uh, relationship. Um, we want to talk this week about uh, National's action plans. Um, I guess the first question that I've got for you is, what do you see as the most alarming thing there that, that, that they're uh, drawing up? Well, um, funnily enough, I think uh, you may as well start with uh, the number one on the list, which... Um you know, it's, it's kind of one of these good thing, bad things. Um, it says halve the budget budget deficit next year and be back in surplus by 2014-15. Um, that's a bit of, bit of a novelty there, just because it's a um, it's it's a thing with a target and a deadline. Mm. There's there's a few of those in there, but most of them are just just actions. And um, this one particularly because it's a, a target and a deadline that um, when when I I asked him about it at, at one of these press conferences launching the um, launching the coalition deals. He kind of um, kind of didn't actually promise to achieve it because, as we've just had um, the crown accounts and the um, treasury predictions have both just um, been been cut down in terms of the expected performance of the economy. Mm. But um, of course, a lot of that. Um, a lot of that budget control isn't um, so much improving the economy as just reducing government spending, yeah. which um, which is a kind of overall program. And so there's there's some of the other um, targets are all um, having all the departments have their four year spending cap plans ready and so on. And then they've been um, like uh, aiming more or less for a zero increase budget. Yeah. Or something that looks very like one. Both these things, um, earthquake aside, it, it's, it's kind of weird how, how they're kind of making these predictions. Like we'll we'll do this and we'll 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 cut the, the the deficit and we'll get to this point. When the rest of the world's telling us that uh, the financial systems looks. I mean, I, I'm not an, an economist, but mm. from the outside looking in, it looks like it's starting to implode, and we're going to get sucked into that. And so, to me, when they start making these predictions if you like it just seems a bit well yeah that's on on a, on a straight road but the yeah. road isn't always straight you know yeah yeah um i mean that's um uh, the whole uh what, what what's uh the uh election campaign um billboard with um you know recover the economy sooner or whatever it was and you just look at it and go sooner than what <laughs> i can't hold you to this what are you talking about but um but yes, I mean it does. It does mean more austerity, possibly you know not as much as is being faced in Europe and the UK and places like that. But um, it's there is plenty of argument as to whether that's that's the way to go if you've got a grand plan for fixing things. Yeah. Um, other other highlights here. Um, BFM listeners might actually be interested in the um, uh, starting out wage that yeah. they're looking at expanding. This is more or less a, um, a special minimum wage for um, anyone, or possibly even below 20 or something, yeah. um, coming into into a new job, possibly their first job. I, I think if you're under 18, uh, um, any new job, even if you change it, you can be paid, um, paid a cut minimum wage for... Um, uh, an, an extended period of time. Yeah. It's a bit like 90-day trials, but for for an entire class of people. So so what a national, uh, uh, you know, s suggesting that this made even longer than... Because is it... At, am I, correct me if I'm wrong, but is it at 90 days at, at present? Uh, it's... Yeah. That's the, um, that's the trial hiring uh, period. Yeah. So you can be um, dismissed uh, of more or less at the whim of the employer. This is more... Um, more about the amount that you can be paid. Yeah. The, the purpose of this is, and I'll quote, to ensure our young people are not locked out of the job market. There's this interesting um, tension in the, um, in the employment plans from, from National in that um, you, you're constantly driving um, 
you know, the, the way to get employers to hire more people, the only idea you really have is to lower wages. Mm. Uh, but you are also constantly talking about giving people incentives to get off the benefits, so you, so you keep cutting benefits as well, yeah. or um, applying more rigorous measures to, to, to force people off benefits if you can get them off them. So that, that's, a, that's an interesting, um, well, you know, <laughs> if you were inclined, you could regard it as a virtuous cycle, but... Yeah. We've also had this uh, bit that's come up yesterday, um, you know, uh, pushed by the ACT Party, the... Mm. <sighs> those rascals. Uh, the charter yeah. schools. What do, you yeah. make of, what do you make of that? Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm aware that um, Rob Selman on the, on the Pundit blog has, has, a, has a nuanced opinion that's probably quite well informed about charter schools. Mm. But, uh, I suspect it can be very good but as a um um as a as an overall policy it um has has a lot of potential problems mm. and the, the individual schools can be great but it looks like on average that they um they're not much of an improvement on on a public school system and probably particularly on on new zealand's at least um at least the way it was before they started trying to introduce standards and there'll also be um bringing in have, making all the schools report against the um publicly against the um education standards yeah. um right and but on the, on the bright side at least for, for act we did um someone did point out yesterday that that there was actually a public mention of this charter school plan before the election, yeah. all of the press gallery, when they heard about it, were kind of um, shocked and confused because they had never, um, never noticed it, and it wasn't actually in the Act policy document. So the idea that you would um, you would negotiate it in a, in a um, post-election agreement was a bit of a surprise and didn't strike people as very democratic. But actually, Don Brash did make a speech on the um, on the 17th of November, which was of course right in the middle of the teapot tapes scandal. But um, he, he spoke at a school and he described. He said that they would be in favour of a such a system. Mm. Yeah, I, I've got to say, I mean, watching uh, John Banks uh, this week uh, and last week, I don't know. You, you know, when you were a kid at a school, a kid at school, and you'd see the bully, there'd be the playground bully, and he'd have this little friend at his side, the one that was kind of smaller and really soft, really, you know. But he'd be standing there like he was the big man, big man on campus. And, and, and I don't know. That, I'm not saying he is, <laughs> but uh, John John Banks. I don't know. Bullies, true that bullies, mate. <laughs> his um, his his main campaign point, whenever, well, certainly whenever he appeared on the television, was that. Um, was that he would be supporting a John Key-led government. Mm. You know, quote marks, John Key-led government, that's what... That was the phrase that he was repeating mm. over and over again. And the, um, uh, the, 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 the frustrating thing about, about his interviews since is that, that he hasn't actually changed his key phrases now that he's become elected, <laughs> and he, he just launches determinedly into, into those... Um, those phrases again, yeah, I just want um, to... quite, quite, quite loudly and assertively. <laughs> so it's, it's. I think it's probably obvious even to bystanders that, it, that he's just um, slipped the question and is saying what he intends to. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm just sort of. Whenever I hear Banks speak, I always think, who's writing his speeches? What, what is, it, is, is, is he got one of those? Is it student job search job that you know he's got one of those killer? What do they call them? Killer bees. God help us if there's a war, a proper one, you know, where they <laughs> enlist people, because we're not gonna, we're not gonna win in that case. But, uh, but yeah, no, you kind of look at the speech and you go on about, oh well, the the birds have now. I hear the sound of feathers flapping. You're like, <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. It's, uh, <laughs> um, I well, it, it was they did mildly entertain the gallery when he was um, he was standing up there for this. Um, this announcement press conference, and he was talking about um, what with himself being the only member of the ACT caucus. He was saying that he'd, you know, taken things to caucus and that it had been unanimous that he should be leader and <laughs> you know, the, the parliamentary leader of the party. And yeah. he, was, he was quite, quite sure that, you know, that things would be stable and there'd be no infighting. Mm. Well, hey. I guess it's difficult to, to have infighting when there's only one... One person. Yeah, it'd be like a, infighting with yourself, I don't know. I, uh, admittedly, um, 
well, the, the idea of banks even arguing with himself is, is, seems quite far fetched to me. Uh, yeah, well, just, <laughs> I guess one one other thing, and, and I'd be, I'd, we'd probably be remiss not to mention this is the the sort of the, the fact that uh, mining is back on the agenda, or at least the, you know the the moving into the the national parks. Yeah. What do you make of that? It's um, that's a, that's a that's another one that that doesn't show up on the list, and um. Yeah, it, it's sort of, sort of, um, on, it came out, uh, well, even more or less the day after the election, mm. I think, that, um, um, the, I think it's the, the Deniston mine, the gold mine that they're talking about putting in, that, um, at the very least, some of the access roading and things like that would be going over conservation land, and they, there had been a promise that the public would be consulted over things like that, mm. and um, Forrest and Bird apparently got a um, ministerial confirm- confirmation that there wouldn't be public consultation on this particular one, so mm. um, <laughs> I didn't waste any time breaking at least one promise yeah. on that one. It's, it's just, I guess, you know, my, my wife put it, she, she explained it quite clearly, or she, she, she gave a bit of a theory, if you like, when they initially said, we're going to mine in the, the, the park. She said, I'll bet you the, the day that uh, they'll back down on it, under public pressure, and the day that they back down, uh, they'll actually bring out some more nefarious, or at least unpopular, um, policy. And they did just that, I think it was to do with um, welfare. Uh, and she she kind of says the same thing again. She said to me, yeah, it's just a smokescreen, this. They'll pull it back, and they'll introduce something else. And it's funny how um, they put... Well, at least it came back into the public domain, and now and and then a lot of other um, unpopular uh, policies have, have also cropped up. I mean, am I being cynical? Uh, I... My, my impression at the time was that the... Um, uh... They, they 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 really thought they could win at least some ground on the on the mining mining issue. I mean, Jerry Brownlee was very very certain of himself, and yeah. um, there wasn't sort of any any question of uh, of middle grounds or anything like that until they just, just backed <laughs> off completely in the face of enormous public opposition. So um, I think. I think it might have been genuine, and I, yeah, if you if you want to want to look for um, policies that should really be unpopular, then you know, in any given um, period of a month, I'm I'm sure you could find something to satisfy at least you know one person. <laughs> <laughs> um, I might actually just um, just flipping through this thing on the on the second page of the post-election action plan is the um, the law and order ones yeah. which um, uh, there's, there's just a, a couple of things that um, that they talked about before the election a couple, some some of the bills that um, Simon Power who's, who's of course left now but he's famous for being an extremely busy minister and just yeah. getting a, a lot of things done <laughs> irrespective of whether um you know the legal community agreed with them or not yeah. um but one of these ideas um is is something called civil detention orders which uh, is where uh some high you know the very small number of high-risk offenders having served their entire sentence but still being assessed as it being at an imminent risk of, of reoffending. Um, having served their entire sentences, you, the idea is that you would just keep them in for a little longer yeah. until they weren't mm. or, or something like that, which, uh, which, is, um, which uh, is an incredibly radical thing in terms of the justice system. Uh, you know, it's a, case, a case, of, case of imprisoning someone for something that they might do. <laughs> like pre-crime. Yeah, there's a film about. Uh, there's it. a bit Minority Report in that yeah, respect. Uh, I mean, they've already obviously committed an ex- you know a, yeah. a number of extremely serious crimes, but uh, um, uh, there, there have been plenty of instances in the past where people have um, retrospectively rewritten sentences so that um, you get you you have less chance of parole or you, the possibility of parole is removed. Yeah. Or can be removed, but um, but the idea of 
um, rewriting someone's sentences so that their sentence just gets longer uh, had, has definitely not been done before in New Zealand. Well, look, uh, Lyndon, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and uh, we'll, I think we, we speak every other week uh, mm. at this point, so um, thanks for coming on the show, and uh, I hope you have a great day, mate. Thanks for having me along. Thanks. Always a pleasure. <laughs> See you, mate. I, 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 I,